Today we're installing the front lift on our 955 Turbo S. I'm Justin. And I'm Aaron. And this is Hoosman Bros. And before we go too much further, please subscribe to follow us on our journey of turning this Turbo S into a lifted monster to sell on Bring a Trailer. We did the back. Are you ready to do the front? I guess I'm as ready as that can be. Right, well we, Thankfully we've got Rob here with us. We do have Rob here with us. Hey everyone. Hey Rob. So we did the back end in about two hours. So what are we thinking of the front end? Well, you know, there's more work to the front end because uh, you actually have to take out the struts. Okay. Uh, and the struts come out, you have to remove several bolts, you have to remove some bolts inside, underneath the uh, front fenders. Okay. Uh, then of course all the suspension components, or you know, the main suspension components. Okay. It's a little bit more work. We're gonna try a different technique this time. Okay. The first time I did it, it involved a lot of prying. It involved a lot of four letter words. <laughs> it involved a lot of sweat. I think at one point I actually had literally rivulets of sweat coming down my face. We're gonna try something different. I'd okay. like at least, I'm not so sure I'm gonna eliminate the four letter swear words, but <laughs> I'd like to eliminate the prying and the, uh, the just the amount of, massive amount of muscle we had to do. Sure, well yeah. this is a family channel, but eh, all families are different. Aaron, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this thing. Great, let's do it. No. If you watch our last video, you realize that we're in the same clothes, and that's not just for continuity's sake. We actually just finished the rear lift. The car is still in the air from that process. And so now I'm gonna let Rob explain what we're doing on the front end right now. So we got a bunch of stuff that we have to take off to remove the strut. Uh, main thing we have to do is take this upper control arm bolt off. We have to take the lower strut bolt off. Um, we have to take the uh, sway bar link end link off. Uh, and then we have to disconnect all of these wires. We wanna to get to the point then where we can undo the three bolts that hold the whole assembly up into the fender. That should pretty much loosen everything. Then we can take this carrier piece here, move it forward and to the side, and then we should be able to lift the entire uh, um, strut assembly out. Worst case, we're gonna go ahead and, and put a, um, a jack with a, a piece of wood to balance it, and we may loosen the subframe and let it drop down a little bit to give us a little extra clearance. Okay, you guys know this makes a lot of bang, right? Right. Just like that. We've lowered the car a little bit. I know you've loosened all these up. Right. What's next? So after loosening all the bolts okay. and um, disconnecting all the wires that, that uh, kind of are in the way, we have to actually come inside in the engine bay. There's three bolts that we have to get to on okay. each side. Uh, two are easy. So there's one here. There's one buried kind of in here-ish. There's one in here. So that's, this is the tougher one to get to. Okay. Um, on the other side, that one's even a little tougher because you really have to bend that panel up a little bit. These panels, as you know, are getting old and brittle and not right. friendly. The other option is you just take off the windshield wipers, which is... <laughs> yeah, I know we don't want to do that. We don't want to do we that. So trust trust me, I've, so, I've done right. that. So we're going to try when we get to that side to peel it up a little bit. That helps if you have another pair of hands, you can kind of fish around to get that bolt. But uh, this one's tough, the one that's in here. Okay. It's in a bad spot. It's kind of behind the uh, fuse box and the master brake um, cylinder. And it's if you lose it, it goes down into a part of the car that you'll never get to. So the good <laughs> news, though, is that your wise gives you new bolts. So okay. you just want to be careful when you well, when let's you throw try it not to lose this. Yeah. One. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack this one first just to get it going, and then we're going to come back and we're actually going to take these two out, leave this one in. We'll take the rest of that out. Okay. Last. Great. I'm gonna support it. We have three bolts inside the fender we need to remove in order to get this control part off. So the th we have one here, one approximately here, and then there's one buried in here. We were trying to bend the panel back, but it's just too old. So we've decided to pull off the windshield wipers. Rob's gonna show us a trick to line them back up again easy. That's a 16 millimeter socket. We'll show you what it looks like when we get those pulled off. So to align the windshield wipers properly, it's good to mark where they're supposed to fit when they're at rest. What we do is we take some basically painter's tape and we put it right along the bottom edge of the windshield wiper. That now tells us that this one should sit right here at full, at basically full rest. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side, basically right here. There we go. Now, we'll know now that this is the proper alignment for the windshield wipers. So this, this basically comes out and then pulls forward. So it's kind of wedged onto the windshield. So, see, see how, it, how it's kind of... It's kind of 
stuck on this. Yeah, for sure it's stuck on yes. there because it's been, you know, it's been, it's been on there for 15 years or however many years. There we go. There we oh, go. Oh, oh, that's messy. And then uh, yeah, there's a too. there's a connector, I believe. Okay. So I'll probably take this part here and, and do a good job of cleaning it. It's pretty, it's pretty nasty after all these years. But yeah, we'll we'll make it look good. After a lot of wrestling, a lot more disassembly than we thought. We got the front strut out. This is the first step to putting that lift in the front end. I'm pretty proud of what we did here today. Here's the gap where the strut went. As you see, it's filthy. I'm filthy. I earned my money today, Aaron. Okay, so we've got the strut out of the truck. Um, if you watch our last video, it shows you how to do that. Now, when you are doing a lift on the front end, you have to use this new control arm. It's engineered a little differently to account for the lift. So make sure if you're doing that front end lift that you're putting this control arm in. Just replacing this control arm uh, will be the same process, but we do have to use this special control arm uh, to account for it, so now we're gonna put that on. So these should be replaced at 100,000 miles anyway, but we're gonna go ahead and replace this one because we have to. This one, is, this new one is engineered uh, for the lift we're putting on, and it looks awesome, so that's a big plus. But yeah, these do have to be replaced. The process for replacing these will be the same whether you use the different one for the lift or you just replace it with a stock one at 100,000 miles. Just like that. So you'll notice these are these are pretty different, right? right. Um, first of all, this one has a bit of an angle, right? You can see this, and also this is more angled than this one as well. And there's a reason for that. When you're doing the uh, suspension adjustment, mm -hmm. the, the challenge is that three inch lift really creates some problems if you put this back in. Okay. So this has been optimized specifically to account for that three inch lift. Plus, they give us also this fitting here. This fitting uh, actually helps to reposition the uh, right height sensors, which is what this this bracket here is. It, right, it goes, I noticed this came off when we removed right. it. Right, we'll actually take this piece off and we will replace it with some parts that Eurowise gave us that are actually adjustable, which really help us to dial that okay, in. Okay, perfect. But, but we will reuse the sensor part, right? We're just replacing this arm. That's correct, yeah. Eurowise gives us adjustable arms, but we do replace the whole sensor. Okay, excellent. So we put the uh, uh, the control arm back in. Actually, we reuse the same bolts. That makes it really easy. Yeah. It actually slides in really easy. We didn't have to use a mallet or anything, but as you can see, look at look that. At, oh, wow, that's impressive. So, all right. I think we're doing some improvement. And the reason it does that is because he's got these really high-end Delrin bushings, which right. as a lot of suspension guys know who do you know race setups, Delrin's the way to go. Now, I do want to mention, this part is expensive. Be careful. When you're doing all this sort of stuff, this is about a $2,000 part, right, for the strut. Right. And uh, make sure that you don't mess around with your screwdrivers and pry bars and puncture this thing while you're doing this whole process. Yeah, and one place to be really careful, obviously, is right here. This is the inlet for the air, the air uh, pressure right. from the air tank, actually, that sits in the trunk. And if you watch the other video, you'll see how we disconnect that in detail. So I, I noticed that you put it in this direction can this be done either way or is there a direction for for each sure side? there is Th okay. this this part of it has to bend this, this in this downward motion here okay this is really where the optimization uh to account for the three inch lift this is where it happens is right here okay excellent let's go ahead and get it put in great this is the adjustable ride height uh this replaces this piece here because we can really do some adjustments here with uh, with how it's no, it's installed. I'll probably put it kind of in a middle position and then okay. we'll adjust it later. And this actually will go on the good it, snaps, it just snaps on there, right? This just snaps on, yeah. Perfect. And then the other one just snaps. So we'll just kind of leave it kind of like that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the control arm. Rob's gonna tighten these up, but we're gonna get back to installing the lift. And that involves a little bit more work with this, but we thought control arms were their own thing worth doing. Once we get it back in, we'll show you what it all looks like. Um, it's gonna look great. Look forward to it. Our next step is to extend these legs. So we've got these extensions here again to account for that lift and to bring it up a little bit. And Rob is putting together the bolts right now. There are some critical things to remember about how these bolts go in. Well, first of all, what uh, Eurowise has done is um, because you cannot put a large lift assembly on top of the air strut, it's just impossible. They've come up with other ways to, to give that give the lift. One of them is this piece here, which fits right on top of the legs, uh, and, and it uh, assembles with three bolts on either side. Okay. So then the other thing we have to do is we have to put in three bolts to hold it in place. Okay. Uh, you use a larger one, 
But here's the critical thing. Got to come in through the bottom. Okay. Why is that? Well, because if you come in this way, it could hit the drive shaft, and okay. which would be kind of a bad thing. <laughs> that makes sense. Excellent. So we'll go ahead and get these bolted on and get it back in the truck. I want you to remember when you're putting this together, big bolt in the middle, two smaller bolts on either side. Okay, so as you're putting this together, one thing to remember, you've got a 13 on the bolt and a 12 on the bolt head on these smaller bolts. And what size is the middle? 17 on both. 17 on both for the middle. So you need a 13, 12, and a 17. And you need both the box end and the ratchet to get it tightened up because you got to hold it. So after we put the extensions, the, um, the, the, the strut extensions, the next thing to do is we're going to put in the new uh, sway bar uh, link. This one is a nice, it's, it's uh, adjustable, which makes it really, really uh, easy once it's in the car. But you do need to be careful of the orientation of how it actually goes in. It comes with these spacers, and you need to make sure that this thin piece mates up against the ball like this inside the uh, inside the, the the link itself and you can see i've already pre-positioned one on here right so that's all correct and then on the other side we'll just simply um use the the existing bolt and the existing nut so here is the old sway bar link you can see not adjustable and the new sway bar link here all right so i've got this bolt on here it's just finger tight and uh, i want to have some play in here and leave it loose as we get it put back in so this is ready to go back in uh, but we've got some other steps other things we've got to do before we put this in so let's go ahead and get to those okay so the next part for this side is we need to remove the trim piece correct um, so we've taken out the clips is there anything else that's tricky about this that we need to be looking out for yeah there's actually a, a little screw underneath the uh, windshield wiper filler cap uh, this one happens to be missing it but it's right here it's a torx t20 you'll need to remove that and then you kind of have to finagle this it takes a little bit of finessing to get this off but and you may have to twist the cap a little bit but once it's off, it should come out just like that. All right, Rob, so we did a time lapse through the magic of editing on the other side. Right. A lot faster than what they've seen so far. What are we actually doing on this side? Show me what's going on. Exactly, so what we're gonna do is we have to remove quite a bit of stuff under here to get to the strut so we can remove it. First thing we're gonna do, this is the bolt that, that uh, holds the upper control arm. We're gonna re remove this and then pop this. Um, there's a bang. There's no doubt when you, when these two pieces separate. We're also going to remove all of these hoses and just get them out of the way because they're they're in the way when you try to take this out. Um, we're going to remove a large bolt that holds this entire assembly piece in place. We're also going to remove the bolt that uh, that ties this uh, whole strut to the uh, sway bar. Um, we're not going to remove this bolt here because it's really impossible while the strut's still in. Um, the last thing we're going to do. We're gonna remove these three, they're 16 millimeter uh, bolts that are up inside the fender. We're gonna take all three of those out. And then just before everything comes out, we're gonna disconnect the air hose. Now, we th there's no air in the system because A, the car's off, and B, we already bled it from the other side. So this one will be easy just to remove. This is a 10 millimeter bolt, 16 millimeter bolt. These pieces here just utilize just, just clips and, and, and they're easy just to twist out. It's a 21 millimeter bolt for the um, for the, the main bolt that holds the strut to the uh, wheel wheel carrier, and then it's 18 millimeter bolts for the um, the, the the sway the sway bar uh, piece. All right, so Rob is going to let me do the honors and break this one open. It's my first time, and uh, <laughs> he he did let me know that it is not dangerous, but it is going to make a loud noise. So be prepared for that. Don't be scared. You'll be all right. All right, that was very anticlimactic. That was very anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> so we've popped the, uh, the ball joint holding the control upper control arm in place. The next thing we're gonna do, of course, is we're gonna get this main bolt here uh, that, that holds the strut assembly into the wheel carrier. There you go. Come on, be nice. This is a stubborn bolt. There we go. There we go. Okay, now that we've got all of the um, main bolts either loosened or disconnected um, where the strut and the carrier meet, we have to come into, into the wheel well and take out three bolts. Um, now, the good news is you may have saw, saw that we did on the other side. That one bolt back here, that's hard to get to. This one's a little easier to get to. You can actually get your hand in there if you drop the bolt. So we're gonna get these other two knocked out of the way 
and then we'll be ready to completely lower the strut. So to get access to the top bolts that hold this, the whole uh, control uh, assembly or the whole strut assembly, we're gonna have to remove this uh, um, secondary vacuum pump here. It just requires two 10 millimeter bolts. Um, we'll squeeze this uh, hose clamp and take it off. And there's one small electrical connection, but it take, it'll just take us a couple of minutes to do that. We have to remove this clamp here. This style clamp requires uh, some pliers. So what you're gonna do is grab the pliers on either side, squeeze it, let me get it up to the edge here, squeeze it till they meet, and then it just moves right off. It's very, very easy. Then from there, we can just pull that hose right off. So Rob, why the surprise face? Well, it's interesting. Um, the last one, the last vehicle I did a lift on was a, um, a the V8, the Cayenne S. And there's some differences, of, of course, in the motor. One of the big differences between the two is the turbo has this large torque arm that's right here. And what I realized when I pulled one of the bolts that holds the uh, strut in is that it actually is partially the support for the torque arm itself. Okay, so should we replace this bolt then? Well, this bolt's gonna be replaced with the uh, the new kit because we have to put spacers in, so we need a little bit more space, right? Okay. So yeah, this, this bolt is part of the scrap heap now. Okay, so I'm gonna do the final bolts. I'm gonna take the main bolt out that holds the strut into the uh, wheel carrier. All of the, really, the torque or the pressure right now is, is, is being um, placed on this bolt here. So we'll replace that. This whole assembly is then gonna kind of fall down, right? You wanna make sure there's nothing under here because, you know, it's kind of heavy, right? So um, safety first, always remember that, make sure there's nothing under here. But once this is, is loose, then what we're gonna be able to do is move this, the upper part of the carry here out of the way so that we can then um, slide the, uh, the, the whole strut assembly out. Don't be surprised if a lot of air comes gushing out when you get to this, about this point, the air will start seeping and then it'll be a big whoosh, obviously, as the entire system purges itself, one, but also, oh, there's actually some Isn't air. Now, yeah, we get some yeah, air now. Actually, there's a little bit of air, residual air, in this. There you go. So this is where you're absolutely gonna need two people. We need one person to hold this part and to hold the upper control arm up while Rob gets his picker and starts to uh, pull this thing out of here with his own strength. Okay, here we've got a great comparison. We have got the already done and the soon to be done. And you can see, the new parts that we've replaced on here, you can see the shininess that we've got uh, from the one that's already been complete. We've got our upper control arm here. We've got our ride height adjuster here. We've got our strut fork extensions and reinforcement. And then we've got the sway bar, the adjustable sway bar link here. As you can see, we haven't done anything to this one yet. You can see we've got a couple of more inches here. And so now you can see exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, so now we are going to reinstall our new sway bar linkage, but we've got a couple of spacers here, and so they need to be positioned correctly. So this is how you wanna position all of those spacers. So you got one on each side with the narrow side headed towards the sway bar linkage. Now we can insert this, hold our nut on the other side, start a finger tighten, and then we can get that thing drilled down. All right, so we've got that inserted, we've got it finger tightened, and that's all we're gonna do is just gonna tighten that down. There we go, just enough there. We wanna leave that loose for when we're installing it again. Okay, we have both of our control arms assembled. You can see all the new hardware that we've got. These things are lifted, reinforced, and ready to go back into the Cayenne. Rob, why are we under the car again? Oh man, it seems like we're always under the car. Yeah. So what we gotta do is we're, we're gonna try a different technique to reinstall the struts. So I saw a video where someone suggested that if we lower this, which is the subframe, 
we may be able to lower it enough to get this hole so we can align this with our uh with our with our fasteners up in the fender now what we're going to do is we do have to take this piece out here on um, this is the engine cover so this basically protects the underside the transmission uh certain parts of the engine uh you know from road debris really is, is what this does it looks like it has a lot of bolts in it it does believe it or not but the good news is they're all 10 millimeter bolts they're all pretty easy to take out we do have to take out a small uh plastic piece up front which is what we're actually going to work on first okay When we drop the, the subframe, and listen, we have to drop the subframe anyway because we have to put the spacers in. So we're just gonna get ahead of ourselves to see if it helps us to align the strut a little better and make the strut install a little easier. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a combination of a big piece of wood with some hockey pucks and or other spacers to properly align this so that as we lower it, it doesn't tilt one way or the other. Um, then what we'll do is we'll loosen one, two, three, and four right back up over my head. And those will be the bolts that we'll take out uh, and then we'll use the, um, the jack to lower the entire subframe just a little bit, just enough for us to have clearance. We need about two and a half to three inches of clearance to get to this bolt, and then we'll button the whole thing up. Since I'm gonna be doing all the lifting on these uh, control arms, I'm gonna want you to get in there as easy and quickly as possible. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, that's true, okay. We put our three fender mounted bolts through the fender, right? So now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to put these washers on there. The issue is, obviously, when you try to start mounting everything up in there, these bolts wanna go back in. So what we are gonna actually do is we're going to put the spacer on here, right? And then we're gonna roll this O-ring on the top and we're going to cinch it up tight so that the uh, whole spacer assembly actually fits in there. So this is kind of my own pro pro tip here, which is uh, to add these O-rings to, the, to, to these bolts. They don't come with the kit, you have to buy them. Um, you can usually get a bunch of O-rings in a kit and just you know set aside six for this job. But what it does, you can see, it holds this in place. This helps as we start to align the holes that are in the top of the strut into these. Once we get these started, the O-rings don't come off, they're gonna get crushed, don't worry about it, it's no big deal. Uh, but th but they do help this step a lot. All right, part of our Eurowise lift kit is our subframe spacers. So we're gonna put these in the front end. We got four of these, they're gonna go in here and there's uh, two spots on each side. So we're gonna drop the suspension down a little bit, get this in there, put the bolt right back through it. So far, this is not officially the sketchiest thing I've ever done, but we are supporting these control arms with two by fours on the floor. I'm not super stoked about it, but they are pretty solid in there. What Rob is doing right now is taking off some pressure on this by looping it into the frame so that we're not holding up nearly as much. Now we are gonna have another safety stand in the middle there that should help us support the thing, but this is not my favorite part of being under a car is say having parts of it held up by two by four. But hey, <laughs> if we don't make it, you saw it here first. Now when you're working on a car, especially a fine European automobile, it is important that you use the right tools. And the tools for the job will not always be cheap. When you're working on a Porsche, you've got to find the right tools. And there are some very specific ones. For this job, the specific tools we needed came from Harbor Freight. And it was a bungee cord that we can wrap around this arm a couple of times and hook it back onto this tab that's underneath here. So that at least gets a little bit of the force pulled off of this 2x4 that we've got. Uh, doesn't leave it just dangling there. So this is a best practice. If you don't want to take this thing completely apart, this is the best way to have it all together. Okay, so we've got our spacers in, we've got our new bolts run in, but not tightened. We're leaving it a little loose because now we've got to bring the car down and get our struts back in, which is going to involve a lot of muscling things around. We're gonna be doing that close to the ground, but we need the play so that we can kind of jiggle things around before we tighten it up. We've got it down, we've taken the pressure off of these, with our floor jacks here. Our next step is to get our struts back in and this is gonna be a three-man job of jiggling and manipulation to get these things in. I'm gonna elect Aaron to hold this heavy ass thing up uh, and I'll just be Jackman. Okay, so now Rob is headed to get his Dremel because we have to cut these tabs off right here. Rob, can you tell me why we're cutting these off? I have no idea, but they said we had to as part of the instructions. Well, I like instructions. And we're gonna follow. Them. 
Okay, we started by getting the bottom bolts in and trying to attach the top bolts. That did not work very well, so we took the bottom bolt out and we maneuvered this just so we could get it up into those top bolts. And it took the right amount of angle and jacking up of the, uh, the brake caliper to make sure that we could get the right angle on it. But we caught the bolts, so we're hanging here by the bolts that are not tightened. And uh, now we just gotta lower the jack so we can get the bottom bolt through. There's a lot of back and forth with this. In the end, it took three people with support from underneath, someone helping up top, and then a jack man on the other side. So this is not a one-man job. Make sure you have some friends, and I suppose probably some beers for afterwards. But this is absolutely a fiddly job to get it in, but once it's in, you're, you're looking pretty solid. We've got one more bolt here to connect the control arm, and then we're just tightening everything else up so we can get this side sewn up. We're gonna go ahead and tighten the new uh, upper control arm, um, which has features a new uh, bushing. It's a solid bushing versus the one. If you'll remember, the reason that we went with this particular setup is that um, with Eurowise, they built this to help the car align, considering that it has a three inch lift. For this particular job, I'm gonna use a 22 millimeter socket. I'm gonna use a closed on one side, and I'm gonna use um, a, a, a half inch socket on the other, and I'm gonna get it pretty tight. We're gonna come back along and really tighten it up and torque it at some point, but that's now nice and snug. I'm connecting the adjustable sway bar link here, and I've got two 18 millimeter wrenches. I've got my spacers in here, and I'm just trying to get this thing to catch. Okay, so we've got our front air strut back in. Everything is finger tight. Uh, we have to do the other side and tighten the subframe, but then we're pretty much finished with this. We do have to reconnect the electronics and the air. Just do that in the reverse of what you took it off. We certainly hope this video helped you if you're doing the project to not be scared of taking something like this on. Yeah, so please remember to uh, like this video if you like what you see, and also leave a comment below. I'm sure plenty of you uh, have some things that you want to tell us about what we screwed up, so we look forward to reading those in the comments. Right, we love that you know more than we do. Either way, uh, we are putting this on Bring a Trailer. Follow along for the ride, maybe bid on it yourself. Let's see what this experience is like. Come along for the ride. See you next time.